We've been talking about handouts. Let's consider the people who seem most in need of a handout. In many cities, you see people asking for help, spare change, tugging at our hearts with hard luck stories. Could you help the homeless get something to eat today? Help me out, about 12 cents. You got 12 cents? Often out of compassion or guilt, we reach into our pockets and fork over change. But does that help these people? And how do we know if they're truly in need or freeloaders? In Denver, Jeff Hubert spends most days doing what he calls working his sign. That guy should have handed me a 20, little snot. Few drivers give him work, but many give him money. Hey, bud, how's it going? Thank you very much. Would he work for food? I just can't work for anybody. Would he flip burgers at Burger King? I wouldn't do it. It's a monotonous job. Maybe construction? I can't do it. It's my back. He says he would do janitorial work. That I would do. But will he do it five days a week? That I can't do. Why not? Uh, well, why should I? Why does a human have to work every day if he don't want to? All over Denver, we saw people who said they'd work for food. But at a homeless shelter, people told us... There's no way you're going to starve in this town, starting from morning to evening. Larry says he and others work what they call the circuit, 21 shelters and soup kitchens. You got brunches, you got people coming around in buses, take you out, feed you. The one out there in Aurora, what, feeds, showers, give you bus tokens, get back in town. Nobody starves. No, no. You see some, somebody with a sign that says, we'll work for food, he's scamming you. Because in this town... I mean, you make it sound like you could develop a weight problem going to these places. Uh, you you can't. Go see, if you got the IQ above an eggplant, you'll end up with more food than you're going to eat. At this shelter, people read drink coffee, play cards, they iron their clothes. 20 feet away, in the shelter, there's an employment office. Everything in this section right here are the currently available jobs. John Harpnell patiently waits for people to ask for jobs. But, but everywhere I go in America, people are telling me, there are no jobs. You got to have all these skills, a college education. Not so. Have you looked for jobs? I've had medical problems since 94, so. Everyone had a reason for not working. But that was a while ago. You could work now. When I get off my rehab, yeah. You seem healthy. Why aren't you working? Well, no, I am. I am working um, off and on. Why aren't you working today? Well, I'm, well, uh, to, to be honest with you, you know, I, I'm, uh, today I'm drinking. You know? Within eyeshot of that shelter is this temporary employment agency. The manager, John Martinez, says he has 75 to 100 jobs a day that he can't fill. You have plenty of work? Oh, yes. We, turn, we have to turn work away because nobody wants to work. He says for these people to learn to work, Denver shelters have to stop giving so much without asking anything in return. You've got to give them some responsibility, and they're not taking that. They're not taking that responsibility because it's a free handout. Some choose to live just outside town. Years ago, some friends named the Clinton deal. They don't have to go to the soup kitchens. The soup comes to them. Church groups bring them food. We're not hurting for meals. They give us uh, about two, bo two boxes of food each, each week. That's enough to carry us for, for three weeks. They make the guys lazy, you know, they make them not want to get up to work. You know, I've watched so many people die from misdirected compassion. Bob Cote used to sleep here. He used to drink a fifth of vodka a day. But one day, Cote decided it was the kindness of the shelters that was keeping him and these other men down. When you give them what they need, they, can, they don't have to sober up to get a job or anything. You better clean it up, or you're going to be back in the dorm, or you can leave. So Cote yeah. convinced area businessmen and private what, foundations to help him build a shelter that would be different, out. one that would practice tough love. If you don't work and obey the rules, I'll kick them out in a flat second. You feel okay about that? That's Absolutely. cruel. Positively. They know what the rules are. These poor people who have lived at the bottom of society, now you're going to injure their dignity more with these no, invasions? No, I'm going to lift them up. I'm going to pull them up out of that gutter. So I've been out on the streets. I know what to do. Here's a shovel. What are you going to do? Give me that bottle. Get to work. Cote acknowledges that some street people are truly handicapped or mentally ill, and they should be taken care of. But he doesn't buy the argument that alcoholics are helpless victims of a disease. They and the drug users could give it up, he says, 
that the shelters didn't coddle them. It's compassion without any logic behind it whatsoever. And what they wind up doing is killing themselves on the installment plan. At Cote's shelter, if you don't clean up and fix your own meals, you don't eat. The men start out in dormitories and then move to more private rooms as they take on more responsibility. Constructive envy, Cote calls it. He says it motivates people. Something for nothing does not work, John. It's responsibility. If you're going to give a man a bed and a meal, then let him rake leaves down in city park or clean police cars. It's demeaning. Demeaning? That's responsibility, and that's what we've lost in this country. We've lost that along with the work ethic. And who's done it is the poverty industry. They've made these people dependent, and they keep them there. They're competing to feed the homeless. Cote starts his men working in the shelter's car wash. Dave Davis was on the shelter circuit for 12 years until he found Cote. I, I could run just about any scam, you know, that I could think of on these people, uh, these social workers and counselors. And they're, uh, they're pretty easy to con, you know what I mean? Davis says it was only after Cote began demanding that he stop drinking and hold down a job that he was able to clean up his life. Many people find Cote's shelter too tough. Two-thirds of the people quit your program. Well, they can walk right out this door and go right down the street and get in a shelter. And they don't have to work, see? And they don't have to go by these rules. They don't have to make their bunks. You couldn't drag some of these people off the corner with a will work for food sign with a wrecker. They ain't gonna work. They're pretty convincing Hi. when you talk to them. Well, they're experts. They should get an Academy Award. Hello. <laughs> I was skeptical. Won't some of these people who say they'll work for food really work if you make them a good offer? We found a yard that needed mowing, and I set out to offer people $6 an hour plus a hot meal to mow a lawn. You really need to work? You, you need food? Yes. And you'll, I have lawn work. Do you? Do you have some right now? I also gave them round-trip bus tokens. I offered these people a job, too. Are you the guy who had the sign that you'll work for food? I have lawn work if you want it. Where at? We made the offer Humble to 12 11. people who were asking for work. All 12 said they'd come. Yes, great. Only work. this man I'll did. You're the only guy who came. That's because you gave them a dollar's worth of bus tokens. With two dollars worth of bus tokens, you can get a half pint of vodka. The man did the work, and we paid him $20. Bob Cote offered him a place in his shelter, but the man declined. Cote says he's seen him back on the streets drinking. When we come...